spectrophotometric analysis of glucose concentration. The Beer-Lambert law provides the mathematical correlation between absorbance and concentration. It is usually stated as absorbance is equal to molar absorptivity times path length times concentration. The molar absorptivity is a constant and it is characteristic of the absorbing solute. The path length is 1 cm. Since the same cuvette will be used for all readings, the path length will be constant as well. Hence, the absorbance will depend linearly on the concentration over a specific range of concentration values of the absorbing solute. In this experiment, we will measure the absorbance of samples of known concentration and use these measurements to plot a standard curve of absorbance versus concentration. Then, using the standard curve and the absorbance of a sample of unknown concentration, we can extrapolate the concentration of the unknown sample within the range of the standard curve. Here's the equipment needed for this lab. Label all the glassware to ensure that you are organized. The Erlenmeyer and volumetric flasks should be labeled flask 1, 2, 3, 4, and U for the unknown. The more pipettes should be labeled glucose, ferrocyanide, and unknown glucose. The chemicals needed for this experiment can be found in the TA fume hood. Make sure to obtain only as much of each chemical as required with an excess of about 10 to 20% and label all beakers. Remember to record the concentration of the chemicals used in your lab notebook. Begin by pipetting 4 ml of ferrocyanide into each of the Erlenmeyer flasks using a more pipette. Keep the pipette at eye level and ensure that the bottom of the meniscus is at the value you need to pipette. Remember to have one hand ungloved for this step. Then, using a more pipette, transfer the appropriate volume of glucose into the Erlenmeyer flasks according to the values indicated in the lab manual. For example, 1 ml of glucose is pipetted into flask 2. It is good practice to transfer the table of values into your lab notebook. The 5 ml more pipette has two scales on opposite sides of the pipette. We will be using the scale with the smaller numbers. Add water to about the 50 ml mark in each Erlenmeyer flask. This does not have to be exact as we will be diluting it further after the heating step. Ferrocyanide reacts with the glucose present, so the higher the concentration of glucose, the lighter the yellow color of the solution should be. Place all flasks on a hot plate and heat for approximately 15 minutes at a simmer. During this time, turn on the spectrophotometer to allow it to warm up. Set the wavelength to 420 nanometers. Read over the instructions on how to use it and remember to take your gloves off when using the spectrophotometer. After 15 minutes of simmering, remove the flasks from the hot plate and allow them to cool. This can be facilitated by placing the flask in a larger beaker with tap water. Once the flasks have cooled to the touch, you can move to the next step. You do not need a thermometer for this. Using a liquid funnel, transfer the contents of each Erlenmeyer flask into the corresponding volumetric flask. Use a wash bottle with distilled water to rinse the inside of the Erlenmeyer flask and transfer the contents to the volumetric flask. Rinse the funnel and the neck of the volumetric flask. Fill the volumetric flask with distilled water until the beginning of the narrow neck. For the remaining volume, use a pasture pipette to add water slowly until the bottom of the meniscus is sitting on the calibration mark. Be sure to place the volumetric flask on a flat surface and bend down to look at the calibration mark at eye level so that the meniscus is properly perceived. Cap the flask with a stopper and mix the solutions. You can either take one flask at a time and place one hand on the bottom and the other over the stopper and invert 20 to 30 times. You should perceive an air bubble moving from the bottom of the flask to the top. Or you could take two flasks, one in each hand. If a stopper is not available, you can use parafilm to cover the top of the volumetric flask. Stretch a piece of parafilm over the top and seal securely before inverting the flask. To calibrate the spectrophotometer, insert the blank into the position B. Wipe the cuvette with a Kim wipe to ensure that there is no liquid or fingerprints on the outside that may influence the absorbance. 
Then, press the measure blank button for calibration. This will set the blank at 0% absorbance and 100% transmittance. After each reading, rinse the cuvette three times with distilled water and three times with the next solution to be analyzed over a waste beaker. You will use the same cuvette for all your readings to ensure that the path length remains consistent. Next, fill about two-thirds of the cuvette with the solution from flask 1. Clean the cuvette with a Kim wipe and place it in the spectrophotometer. Press the button on the dial corresponding to the position of the cuvette. In your notebook, record the value for absorbance if you're using a digital spectrophotometer or percent transmittance if you're using an analog spectrophotometer. Repeat this process for flasks 2, 3, 4, and U. From the data obtained from flasks 1 to 4, construct a standard curve of absorbance on the y-axis versus concentration of glucose on the x-axis. This is just a sample graph. Your graph may have a positive slope. If you obtained percent transmittance values from the spectrophotometer, you can convert them to absorbance using the formula A equals to negative log of T, where T is a decimal, not a percentage. After plotting these values, you must construct a line of best fit, which will be your standard curve. Ensure that the R-score value is higher than 0.98 in order to be considered accurate. To determine the concentration of the unknown, you can use the formula for the standard curve. Substitute the Y with the absorbance of the unknown sample and solve for X, which will be the concentration of the glucose. You should also double check your answer visually with the graph. For example, in this graph, if the absorbance of the unknown was 0 0.300, then you could use the formula for the standard curve, which is shown here, and plug that into the Y value and obtain a concentration of 2.52 millimolar. Be sure to have a detailed graph, legend, and access titles with units.